whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I see it on here. Yes. All right, what's on this screen? Sure you will. All right. What happened to the? Click the uh, mouse. All right. Yeah. You can see. You can see it's part four. Just. All right. All right. Just making sure. Shalom, everyone. Really. Really. It's a new year, but we're still in the same lesson, so it's all right. It's almost done. Got one more week. Oh, I tell you, five weeks, boy. Huh? I do not know. You been there? I can't wait for you to get there again. I tell you what. Uh -huh. How do I sound online? You sound good, Murray. All right. We're going to go right into it. Warning. I want to take this time to explain that this lesson and the lessons thereafter are not based on any one individual, whether in this assembly locally or abroad. These lessons were not developed by myself alone. Yes, the father has something, if not all, to do with them. If these lessons hit certain points that you feel or believe has something to do with you, all oh, praise to the father. Take that knowledge and apply the solution to your life. Do not take anything personal and miss the message that is being given to solidify your salvation. Yeah. Uh, rules that will be used for all lessons. Please keep your mic muted except when asking or answering a question. Use the mic to speak. There's a feature on Zoom in the meeting room where you can raise your hand if you have a question. Not, not now, not now. Also here in the assembly, if you have a question, raise your hand and speak into the mic for everyone. Speak into the mic, y'all. Don't put it down by your chest or put it under your tongue, or I mean, not your tongue, uh, your chin. Won't you? Now, you, you. <laughs> I can't resurrect it, you do that. Now. Right. So don't put it under your chin so can nobody hear you, okay? Huh? Yeah. No, See, I can't hear you. Uh, Cause you ain't got no mic. <laughs> Our resident mic put on the table upper man didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, he, he, no, he was preoccupied. That's what it was. Uh huh. All right. But y'all get it, right? Just the mic is there for you actually to speak in, not put it all the way down by your knees. All right. All questions must be on the topic. If you have 60 seconds to ask or answer a question, I mean, you have 60 seconds to ask or answer a question. If you pass your 60 second window, your mic will be muted for you. For those that are in the room, you also have 60 seconds to ask or answer a question. There is a mic at each table that can be used. All statements in the room must be limited to 20 seconds. The microphones on the table can be used to share with others that may not hear you online. These rules are due to time and the recordings of the lessons. These are live teachings. We must give the Mori enough time to complete the lesson. This will be mixed with discussions to help build one another. Please do not abuse the time. All right, let's go right into it. We were talking about accountability last week. Anybody remember? No, you don't. All right. Number 16 and 28. And Moses said, hereby you shall know that Yahuwah has sent me to do all these works, and that is, it has not been of my own accord. In Hebrew, it says, not from my heart, all right? You're from your heart, Okay. And what he is saying is someone in leadership, Moses is letting you know that he follows the father and his word. His heart isn't in the business to lead people astray, right? He has a job to do. Remember, we read, was it Exodus 7 and 1? You remember this? And Yahuwah said to Moses, see, I have made you like Elohim to Pharaoh, and your brother Aharon shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you. And your brother Aharon shall tell Pharaoh to let the people of Israel go out of his land, right? So Moses carried the father's authority and spoke with his power when dealing with the Pharaoh. He functioned as the father's representative. He made Aharon the um, interpreter or spokesman for Moses, right? Mm -hmm. 
Jeremiah 23, 16 and 17, thus says you who of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling, filling you with vain hopes. Now, in this context, to prophesy is to deliver a prophetic message, either of proper behavior to a standard or of future events. They speak visions. Oh, you can, you need I know the word is good already. I get it. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of Yahuwah. They say continually to those who despise the word of Yahuwah, it shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart, they say no disaster shall come upon you. Now, in the contrast to the story, Korah was mad at Moses for acting on the authority from which the father had appointed him. He was also mad that Aharon was appointed as prophet that again was because of the father. So Korah wanted to use this against them and thus deceive everyone. Now, there were ways the people who decided to side with these three men should have used to dispel all of this. Yeah, y'all know what that, those ways? What? Mm -hmm. Huh? Nobody? Nobody know what, what you're supposed to do? We, we, we didn't been talking about this for, for oh. Huh? There were ways that the people who decided to side with these three men should have used to dispel all of this. I, I think we discussed what some of those ways were in the first lesson. Hmm? You don't get the question? Everything that they've been, they've been, they've been talking about thus far from what we've been reading, right? All the quarrels that they have with, with, with Moses and Aharon. There are ways they could have stopped all this from happening, right? Go ahead, yeah. Are you talk are you talking about like um like how they were saying, oh, we're supposed to be the chosen, we could also be the priests? No, no, like, what, what I'm saying is Moses? what I'm saying is the quarrel that they had with these two. Yeah, they just didn't like that they were chosen and not they weren't chosen. I understand that, but what I'm saying is what are some of the ways that they could have used to dispel any of this? Korah and them? Yeah, no, the people with them. First, uh -oh. let's, let's not worry about the three they men. Just, they could have just looked at it and said, well, this is from Yahuwah. Is that what you mean? Like they... Yeah, you, 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 you're in the ballpark. All right, so let's backtrack. The whole premise of this story was that Korah and two other men were mad at Moses and Aharon, right? They were mad or they were jealous, right? So what we've been talking about is the ways in which they were mad and jealous, right? I was telling you how they were using deception and all these other things to come against these people, right? What I'm saying, what I'm asking from you all's knowledge now, what are some of the ways that the people that decided to side with these three men could have used to dispel what they were saying? You were halfway there. You you was walking on the sidewalk. I, I feel like I know it, but I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Take it to leadership. Oh, that that that's one of the that's one of the ways. But go back down to the sidewalk. He was working. He was walking on it. What did you say? I said that. Uh, it came by here, you man. Yeah. I said um, that they could have seen, you know, like try to figure out if this was from Yahuwah. But like, that's what they ended up doing eventually, right? When the, like when the ground fell. No, they did not. <laughs> well, not, not them, but Yahuwah did. Like he said, you guys gather, or you guys uh, gather the incense or something? Like, well, that's where we are in the story, but go ahead, go ahead. No, oh, hold up, not Amana, go ahead. Shalom, Mari. Um, mm -hmm. What they could have done was they could have looked at all the things that Moses had done because the father had told him to do it all the way from um, the, the signs and everything that was done while they were in uh, Egypt all the way out to where they are now. And they all could have questioned themselves, you know, uh, what's going on uh, with us and why are we so jealous? with 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 uh, Moses and in Iran if they're not told if they're not chosen by the, the father then you know we, we need to listen to them we really need to listen because they have not shown any other way that they're not from the father 
<laughs> They've all told told us truth about everything. Okay. Who we got? Uh, yeah, he saw that. Um, yeah, they they basically, of course, they should have humbled themselves and and followed Yahuwah's plan and, and realized that Yahuwah had put them in leadership and they should have just humbled themselves and um, instead of, you know, exalting themselves above or putting themselves in that position. Yeah, I think you all are, well, they're, they, no, what, <laughs> not tap dancing, but what, what they're doing, they're, they're giving the, the buy solution to what they actually should have been doing. It's like, it's like a byproduct of it. Who we got? All right. Um, Benedetto. Oops, sorry, I'm at work. Sorry. <laughs> well, um, so um, this, I think, how they could have um, avoided this was the step that the Mashiach gave us, where he told us, if you have an ot or something against your brethren, go and um, bring it to them. If they won't listen at that point, you bring to others um, uh, with you. If that that doesn't resolve it, then you bring them in front of the assembly. I feel like they kind of skipped step one and two, and they just kind of came in mob form, and it created a hostile environment. Maybe. Um, oh, again, yeah, that's that's one of the, the the byproducts of the actual thing, right? That they're supposed to do. Who that? All right, before we get to him, go ahead. No, 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 I'm, no, I'm probably going to throw it completely off because I don't, can you reword the question just a little bit, like maybe explain the question. So with the quarrel that Korah, Defton, and Abiram had with Moses and Haron, right? And we've been talking about the things that they were using to justify what they were doing. When it comes to the people that sided with them, what could they have done that would have dispelled everything that these three men were actually saying. Because nobody got the point until, as we're going to see at the end of the story. And they really probably still didn't even get the point then. But there were specific things that they, <laughs> it's true though. We're we going to see it that they didn't get the point. But there, there is a certain protocol that they should have followed before they sit up there and sided it with those three men. That could have dispelled all of this. We wouldn't even be talking about it right now. You get it? Huh? So, this, so now do you understand what I'm saying? All, all these answers that you're giving are almost are almost underlying subjects of what the actual steps were. Uh, actually, let me get let me get to who's online first. More though, and then we go around. Shalom. Um, they could, first, you know, with all that they've been through and saw, they could have prayed. Um, secondly, they could have done nothing. Thirdly, they could have told they could have watched Cora. And his cohorts proved themselves as Moses did. That's what I say to it. All right. Uh, we need to go to Imogen first, and then we come that way. One one thing I see that there was lack of communication there. There was definitely lack of communication. Let, and they refused to go to to Moshe and Acheron to get what the Father has said. It was written down so they could have read it for well, them. Well, I give you a hint. It, this was almost a one-sided affair, was it not? Yes. That should let you know one thing right there. Oh, but didn't nobody hear that? But that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> we go here in the front. <laughs> Let's see. YouTube says investigate the matter properly and get witnesses. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Go ahead and say what he said. Yeah, well, he said ain't the right answer. Oh. But what he said was they should have got Cora uh -huh. and them boys, right. that's his words, his voice. And, and dug a pit and threw him wow. in the pit so just throw and rocks threw rocks at, at him. him. That's what he said. Yeah, but okay. So so no court. We're not going to hear no testimonies, no witnesses. I got it. Just, just kill. Okay. <laughs> Didn't he read this? He he read this the Shema, didn't he? My goodness, not a matter. Uh, Shlomo, Murray, you know what? The the people they did not have to listen to Cora and Dathan and all the others, because 
they did not have any kind of proof that they were appointed by the father. No kind of proof at all. Mm -hmm. While Aaron and, and, and Moses did. Okay. I yield. Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, uh, Chief, hey, you, you, you want to oh, say something? Yeah, that? yeah. No, I understand. Yes, you do. Go ahead. What's wrong? <laughs> you tell me again. What is it? The question. The question? Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> So they've already, they were already given, they're, they're already given the instructions of what um, Yahuwah made Moshe to them. So if he already made him an Elohim and he's, they've already established um, as they went out the leadership. So they should have humbled themselves to what Yah had already said, A, and B, uh, to uh, Moshe and Aaron, because that's what was given to them as they went out. So if they would have humbled themselves to those things, they would have been fine. Um, and then after that, well, I'll wait, because I don't know if we're going to get there yet, but I was going to say even after that later on, you notice that um, he was the one that went up and down the mountain, and they said all that he has said, we will do and be obedient. So they should have stayed with that. You'll see that in a second. All right. Now, when it comes to what the people say to you and and or when you go through certain things, you have the blueprint that handles these things, right? And we talked about this, not just with this lesson, but there are certain things that you can do to help yourself out no matter what you're going against. Right? So my, I think my whole point with this is there are certain things that not those three in particular could have done because their minds are already made up. But it's the people that they drug with them that didn't do what they were supposed to do, too. You get that now? Huh? Are we all, are we all on the same page now? Okay. All right. You must be willing to use these resources that the Father has provided for you. They didn't do that. What you said, oh, 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 yeah, you know what? That must be right. Huh? Okay. Huh? You in the ballpark, right? Psalms 12 and 2, everyone utters lies to his neighbor with flattering lips and a double heart, they speak. Uh, that's nobody in here, so. People of today speak with great confidence that speaks to your outer man. The problem is that it may not be from the Father. The outer man can sound and look good to all of us but the Father, because he knows that inner man, right? That's the thing you always try to hide. Speaking against the Father is a sure way to tell if I'm sorry to tell someone isn't filled with the set of park rule that's another thing you got to have this is a trap that people fall for some of us tend to rely on people who aren't trustworthy and the ones who are trustworthy are the ones that we tend to brush aside that sell you a hope and a dream that you can't cash in on and unfortunately the, there are some of the people there are some people who are still gullible enough to buy it now the lines between this walk and uh oh Somebody got the camera. The lines between this walk and the outside world have been blurred. The idea of being set apart includes trends and fads for now. Got to have the latest garment, right? And all that rap, all this rap music, with what, the singing. I'm sorry, that's a side note. <laughs> I'm sorry. The question I would have, yeah, all that boom, boom music. Then you say you who are in the middle of it. The question I would have you all ask yourself is, what side are you on and how do you know? Huh? Huh? Yeah, yeah, hit that little. Go ahead. It's on. Uh, if you're following the uh, Father and the Spirit of Truth. Okay. As in, like, the Holy Spirit and then His commandments and truth. Okay, I can give you that. Go ahead. You, you hit that button so you can turn off. You got to hold it. Mm hmm. There you go. All right. Um, it's on. Hello. Yeah. By the um, by the fruits you shall know them. So what what you uh, your example, how you carry yourself, uh, what people see from you, um, what you produce. Okay, same thing you said, right? Got to lead by example, right? Anybody else? Is it, is we we good with that? 
Okay. Father doesn't need your help. He don't? He don't, he don't need your help. I'm, I'm pretty sure he can handle this by itself. I'm just... Leviticus 19 and 18. You should not take vengeance, all right? And this type of vengeance to take revenge for a perceived wrong or bear a grudge, all right? Which is to maintain hatred for someone, for something or someone based on a previous or perceived wrong, all right? So bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yahuwah. And we all know that this is a genuine love, all right? Oh, you say okay. Who's that? IPhone. Okay, who, who's who is iPhone? We calling you. Hey, out. Sienna, Shabbat Shalom, Mishpaka. So my question, really quick, is um, so when we say neighbor, sometimes it could be um, family members that have done hateful things that don't acknowledge the truth or our um, belief system. Um, as do I still have to give them the same forgiveness as I would my Hebrew brothers and sisters, or because I have, it's confusing a little, a little bit. So, you ever heard the thing is treat others as you had them do unto you, right? You want to be able to show that you can give the same type of love. Now, of course, this is really talking about the people inside the truth, but why wouldn't it go for everybody that's around you? I didn't remember last week I said you don't have to be a doormat to people either if they're inside, inside or out the truth, but you still want to show that you can have that type of love for some people. Right. And so I guess what I'm um, stuck at is when, like, let's say if it's a family member and they've done something hateful to you and they blatantly let you know that they're not, you know, going to let you in or maybe they're just not ready, then what do we do with that as, you know, Hebrews? Yeah, you want to answer that? You mean like you want to hold on to their grudge? Right. Well, ask it. Yeah. I just want to clarify. You're asking if if the person, the other person, wants to hold on a grudge against you against you. Is that is that this is that the question? Right. Okay. So no. Okay. So let me let's say this. So if there's like an aunt or uncle, they're like, no, you and such and such need to reconnect and be close because you're blood, right? But you know the Hebrew person. You know that that family member is not interested in nurturing that relationship, right? So then you as a Hebrew decide, okay, I'm just going to avoid wickedness. I'm just going to stay away. But then you have the family members pushing you, pushing you. When do we stop? You know, I mean, you can forgive. I mean, you won't forget, but it's like, what What do I, what am I supposed to do with a situation like that? Uh, uh, Shaul said you got to live peaceably with all men as much as possible. And if they're not willing to live peaceably with you, then you you know in order to maintain a certain amount of peace, then you don't you don't spend you don't try to force yourself on them, and they're not going to try to force yourself on them. But there you go. See, okay. You, you but do that doesn't mean I'm being. Cordial. But does that mean I'm not being um I'm not being uh righteous if it is? I'm like, well, no, just let them take the time and and get to know me, type of thing. You know, because like my elders are pushing it, but I'm like, no, I don't think they're ready yet. And that's it. I digress. It's like I said, you don't have to be a doormat to what they're going with, what they're saying, you know, what they're doing with you. But you have to be able to show some of that. You don't. Uh, how am I trying to put this? Yeah. Right. So in layman's terms, I would say when it comes to, let's just say, family members, there's a way you can be cordial with the family members. But the standard for brothers and sisters is by the Torah. So the way that we, we are held to a covenant that we all agreed upon. So with that agreement, we have to keep that. Whereas those that are outside doesn't have that standard or they did not agree to the standard. So in that, we got to recognize that even though we're the ones that that's held accountable for our actions, we still can be cordial with family members, but the family members can't push something when they themselves are outside of the agreement. Thanks, Maureen Lamont. Thank you. All right. Now, when it comes to taking vengeance and holding a grudge, these are some of the things that Core and his company forgot not to do, right? You ain't supposed to do this stuff, but that's what they were looking for 
vengeance based upon the grudge they had that they were holding. Now remember, uh, in the beginning, they said they told Moses that he was trying to kill them because of their living conditions. They gave oh. no back. Yeah. Moses was not hey, look. He wasn't in the same condition. Apparently, Moses had his own tent at the top of the mountain. So he was looking down on what they were doing, right? Oh. Right. They took no accountability, whereas Moses was holding himself accountable through the Father and his word. Is that what Brother Ma was saying when it comes to being to able to dispel all of this? What was the accountability? Did nobody take it? Everybody just heard one thing and they ran with it, right? So you're never going to hear me say that those 250 people, you know, were innocent by no means. Now, they got what they deserved because they didn't follow the protocol, right? Hold yourself accountable based on ooh, based on the fa on the father's word, right? Who does this? Because I, I some yeah. Who does this? Show of hands. Who who holds itself? Uh, nobody holds it. Who holds itself accountable? Yeah. Y'all yeah, can read just like I can. I just, my words come out slow sometimes. Okay. All right. I'm just making sure. Did, did anybody on online raise? Did, did they put a hand up? Nobody. No, I did. Huh? I, okay. Okay. I, I do, but I didn't put my hand up. <laughs> I put my hand up. Okay. <laughs> it's because I can't see. You don't mean nothing. Proverbs twenty and twenty two. <laughs> do not say I will repay evil. I will we pray we pay evil. Yeah, I will. I'm sorry. I know. I don't know why I can't talk today. Do not say I will repay evil. Wait for Yahuwah and be, and he will deliver you. I don't know why I can't talk. I promise you I haven't been drinking. I have not been drinking. All this stuff that, we're, that we've been talking about should all tie back into the Father. No matter how you feel, what things you look or sound like, make sure that you do what the Father has commanded and see how things can change if and when you allow yourself to change. If you're not willing to do that, how's any of this going to work? All right. All right, Romans 12, 17 and 21. Let me see if I can read this right. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so, huh? if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. So there goes the, that's what I was trying to say to Sienna. You, you gotta, you gotta learn how to get along with everybody, right? It doesn't mean that you have to succumb to them, but you should definitely make an effort to get along with people. Okay, beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of you, of the Elohim, for it is written. Here goes vengeance again, right? Now, vengeance in this context is punishment or the act of harming someone in return for an injury or offense can include harm beyond what is physical. This is how a lot of trauma starts when people want to play mind games and such. Right? They definitely were doing this in the story, if you didn't notice. Because three of them played the mind games pretty good and got a whole bunch of people to follow what they were talking about. All right. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says Yahuwah. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Remember I was, last week I said killing them with kindness was a real thing? Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I know everybody practices that, right? Is that okay? In your eyes, the actions you take may not be extreme, but the fact that you're going against the father is most definitely extreme and the problem. That's it. Now I'm talking about people in this walk. I'm not talking about when dealing with people outside the walk. If you agree to a certain type of covenant, this we all supposed to agree to, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and didn't most of y'all, if all y'all get get dipped in the water? Yeah. Huh? Okay. So you said that you was going to, oh, that wasn't my fault. Okay. They went swimming. It wasn't my fault. My point is that you agreed to do this stuff. This is what you're supposed to be doing, right? 
and going against the Father, which is where your trouble is going to come from. It's just, it really is that simple, right? When you try and replace the Father and do your own brand of judgment, do you not think you receive the same type of faith that these people suffer? Now, like I said, it may not be death, you know, maybe, right, it may, you know, you may have a broken ankle. Maybe, maybe so it's not, not for me to say, but, but something will happen, right? There has to be some type of consequence for your actions, right? Sometimes we worry about the wrong things and get caught up with stuff that usually wouldn't bother or concern us at all. For that, we have to suffer the consequences and take accountability for what comes with those actions. That's in that blueprint I say that, that you're supposed to have. Yeah. Okay, you don't bother nobody in the physical, but, we'll, but what about in your mind, huh? What about in your mind? What you be saying about them in your head? Okay, yeah. Yeah, you forgot all that's being recorded, didn't you? Number 16, 29, and 30. If these men die as all men die, or if they are visited by the fate of all mankind, then Yahuwah has not sent me. Isn't this about the same thing as the same about the prophets? That's how you can tell them apart? But if Yahuwah creates something new, and the ground opens his mouth and swallows them up with all that belongs to them, and they go down alive into Sheol, then you shall know that these men have despised Yahuwah. Remember from the other lessons we said, despise means it looks that you're looking down on with contempt. So you really got a contempt for what the Father is saying right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, just like this, this, like a long guy manicure, right? If Yahuwah should do something unique like open the earth and swallow Korah and the others, the people would know that Moses' leadership was from the Father and that Korah had acted presumptuously and sinfully. Well, we ain't got there yet, but did they do that? No, 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 no. Did they, did they realize that Korah had acted presumptuously and sinfully? No. Oh, okay. I was about to say, hold on. I know this can't be the first time you haven't read this story now. <laughs> In your own opinion, and this is a good question. In your own opinion, is there any way you can prove that what someone says comes from the Father? Go ahead. Now, at this time of period? Yeah, why not? Yeah, if it comes to pass, right? If it comes to pass? Okay, well, what about before then? Do you always need a visual first? So what else could you what else could you use? Huh? I hear my hand. Yeah, let's get there. Go ahead. All right. Hello. If it's according to the word, like if what they're saying correlates with the word, that's how you know. Like um the most sides are working with them. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Since she was down my spine right there. That was, that was good. That was real good. You, 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 you want? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Who's this up here? Benedetto? Right, okay. Yes. Huh? Huh? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. But do, do you have an example? She, 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 she answered the question. I got you. All right. Not a mana. <laughs> Shalom, Ari. When someone tells you about a vision or a dream, um, and it comes to pass. Oh, what happened? Did you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I said, when someone tells you about a vision or a dream, um, and then it, it it comes to pass. Okay, that's one way. I guess. But uh, that's if you could tell if it's true or not. That's what you're saying. Who else was there? Who was there? Oh, Kanisha, you was, you you said you had something else to say. Never mind. A phone call came in and knocked my mic out. Sorry, but just out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, um, the witness of the word. Um, it can be someone bringing uh, a word to you in a conversation, and it's it's just. Um, all of it ties back into um, what the Aki said before that Yahuwah's word uh, will confirm, I guess. Okay. All right, more though. Through affirmation, 
um, a true prophet or prophetess um, can sometimes um, speak directly into a situation that's going on in your life without necessarily knowing in details. So that's like affirming and um, also um, ending it with a, a positive um, outcome from the most high, positive or negative from the most high. Okay. Uh, all right, can you see, you, you hear something now? Sorry, sorry. Okay, so I'm just um, land backing on what he said. For instance, I was in a class, um, a holistic class, and up until like we were on a 10 day um, detox. Um, and up until the eighth day, everything sounded okay. But then they got to talking about um, extensive classes and going into the go to the ocean and doing like spiritual baths and things like that, because everything just seemed to be lining up. And then that's what made me uh, pump my brakes, because I know, OK, now I know you're going contrary to what the word has said, because Moshe said, if anyone prophet or dreamer of dreams or anyone that comes to you and they're talking and not to listen to them, if they're leading you to a, another mighty one or another. Else. So once again, I, I just wanted to give an example of how that can kind of work. Oh, that was just discernment. You, you know, you, you, you knew you had to get up out of there. Oh, you got one in the back, one in the back. <laughs> My opinion, I, I'm looking at it like this. If you want to know the truth, first of all, you're going to look up scriptures mm -hmm. and then you're going to ask for understanding. You can't get one without the other. You can't depend on, you know, you have to be some re you have to have reason and you have to at first of all you got to hear mm -hmm. and you have to like i said you have to have the scriptures to help you see what is coming i think that's one of the steps they missed right? they heard it but they didn't they didn't try to research none of that all right all right no, yeah, well, they ain't, they ain't asked that question. One sure way to know is to follow is that whatever someone is saying should line up with scripture, right? You, well, you, yes, today. Yes. Did, did I really need to put today on? Oh, my goodness. Today, one way to know is if the father is, if the father is everything should line up with scripture today, okay? Just like U.S. currency, that should be backed by something substantial. Is I said like it should be. <laughs> your words and your actions need to be backed by something substantial, which in this case is the word. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Just like Eman was saying, First Thessalonians 5, 20, do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Did any of them do that? Do that? You know what now? You, you don't mess with you. Hmm? Oh my goodness. You said something. The gift of prophecy was the ability to receive and communicate direct revelations from the Father. We did a whole series on that. Right? So there is a need to heed what a true prophet has to say. The Father warms the heart enlightens the mind and empowers people's ruah. It is the effective working of the set apart ruah that Paul warned against hindering. So if you don't hinder that, then you come to Proverbs 3, 5, and 8, and you will trust in Yahuwah of all your heart, and you do not lean on your own understanding, uh-huh, in all your ways to you do what? And he will make straight your paths. And then what else is going to happen? If you're not wise in your own eyes to do what? Huh? And turn away? Because why? It will be healing to your flesh. And, uh huh. Y'all see it. Go ahead. I think some of the challenges that some might have is mm -hmm. they believe that they're still, even in, in their own, they're believing that's still Yah. Hmm. So when he said lean out to your own understanding, sometimes they're believing that understanding is not them. It's right. still Yah. And, they're, and so the question might be is how do you discern when it's you? Versus it's yeah. I think we talked about that last week, didn't we? I'm pretty sure we did. But let's see. Hebrews 10, 22, 25, even though this is future. Let us draw near with a true heart and assurance of faith, 
with our hearts sprinkled. You, everybody knows from Ezekiel 36 25. You can read that in your own time. Clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encourage one another and all the more as you see the day nearing. You say, what? You, some, some people just don't want to meet with one another? Why? It's, but if you've following the protocol or the blueprint so you can dispel the stuff that's making you not want to meet with that person wouldn't wouldn't that make sense oh oh y'all didn't hear that y'all didn't you got new people here they're gonna walk right on out <laughs> how can any of us get to this point but still do the things that we want to do have people still living how they want to live. And let's not forget about the people thinking they have a say-so other than the Father. Now, this is in the walk. I'm not talking about outside the walk. But how can, any, how can we have a hope for any of that when we're still allowing ourselves to do this? Hmm? Yeah, this is a question you think about. Yeah, yeah, you know. All right. 2 Timothy 2.19. You should remember this, but Elohim firm foundation stands bearing this seal. You who knows those who are his and let everyone who names the name of you depart from iniquity, which we all know is unrighteousness, right? The failure to adhere to more principles, commands, or laws. In First Chronicles 28 and 9, and you, Solomon, my son, know the Elohim of your father and serve him with a whole heart and with a willing mind. For you who searches all hearts and understands every plan and thought. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Which is, in this case means to reject or to refuse to accept or acknowledge. Could you imagine going through all that and he not acknowledge nothing you saying or doing? Ow. Ow. And remember the... Your Mel King is watching over you, so got all that stuff recorded now. I went to, I went to every yeah, you went to the Yeah. I was at every feast uh huh. But what was you thinking when you got there? You want to go home? No. I wish you hurry up. Uh huh. That's exactly what they put. Ask yourself if you're following these guidelines that we just read. What morals do you go by in this walk? Do these morals adhere to the Father's word? Do you take action to rid yourself of iniquity? Do you try to reconcile with your brother or your sister before atonement? Note to even one of these questions, you need to reevaluate yourself and get it together. Don't wait till the last minute. I didn't, look, I didn't say that before. We are in feast season. You should already be in full gear by now. We, look. Okay, the memorial <laughs> is coming up, but you, mentally you should be already there. Yeah. Yeah. So what's, what, what you gonna do when he come back? You gonna wait until that time to say, oh, I'm sorry, Father, so everything should be good? Huh? Oh, you gotta wait till you're in line. Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta wait for the, well, this, that hit gonna hurt. I don't think you're gonna be able to say nothing once he hits you with that first one. <laughs> what is a warning? Begin to the part where they about with the, it's, it's, yeah. Go ahead, not mine. A warning is a caution. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Sign. Sign. Uh huh. Uh huh. Hey, one more. You got to well, say it out loud. You gotta. You gotta act like you rapping. Say it. Say it in. Say it on the mic if you one two one two. Go ahead. A warning is um, words given to show that a consequence will happen if you don't adhere. Ooh, that, that sounds like a, a Google type answer. 
Go ahead, Kanisha. It's uh, something that, com that comes before destruction. So it's something letting you know, hey, get ready for something. Oh, yeah, get ready. He said, Yahu Shadow. Um, yeah, it's also uh, has advice in it. Yeah. I yeah. I can see, I see advice. Yeah, advice, yeah. Mm hmm. And not a mom. I'm sorry, Maury. Uh, isn't a warning something that you really should take heed to before going forward? Yeah. Well, that's what, yeah. Okay. Told on, Maury. Uh huh. All right. You get his official uh, answer. Warning a statement or event that indicates a possible or impending danger, problem, or other unpleasant situation. You okay? You're, 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 no, the way he's, he was saying it. Who, who's that? Who, who's that? Uh? Hey, too late. Huh? Oh, you see the show? Show, yo. Yeah. Moray. Hello, I'm Shalom. There you go. Shalom, 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 everyone. Shalom, shalom. Uh, uh, deterrent. I was going to say the warning is a deterrent for the individual. It's, uh, is there as a, a caution sign that in to cause you to understand you're going the wrong direction? Yeah. All right. Let's see what we got here. Statement or event that indicates a possible or impending yeah, danger, yeah, yeah. problem or unpleasant situation. I, I was saying like dynamic, he said it. Yeah. Tool. What everybody else was saying was it's, a, it's an example. It's a lesson. It's a caution. It could be a message. I didn't put, but it also be a deterrent. All right. I, I, I didn't highlight it. It could be cautionary advice. Everybody said that. All right. It could be a piece of advice. All right. Or like Maury was saying, it could be counseling as well. All right. Or a word to the wise. It could be also be an advance notice of something. You get yourself ready, right? A word of warning, right? A forewarning, which is an advanced warning. Now look, I'm, I already told you twice now. You okay? Working on my last. <laughs> <laughs> this is what they should have been doing. Don't become a warning, okay? Number 16, 31 to 35, okay? As soon as he had finished speaking all these words, the ground under them split apart. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their households and all the people who belonged to Kor and all their goods. So they and all that belonged to them went down alive into Sheol, and the earth closed over them, and they perished from the midst of the assembly. And all Israel who were around them fled at their cry, for they said, at least the earth swallow us up. And the fire came out from Yahuwah and consumed the 250 men offering the incense. I, I think they became the warning, right? And just like that, they became a byword, okay? A person or thing cited as notorious and outstanding example or embodiment of something, or a perfect example of, or a classic case of something. For example, this is what happens when you go against the father and, be, and become disobedient. You are forever known for a tragic event that's meant as a learning tool. You didn't became an expert in a textbook for, for other people to see what not to do. Please tell me y'all don't want that. Yeah, for all the wrong reasons. Everybody knew him. No, no, that's okay. Within the display of the Father's profound act of kindness is the attribute of justice that necessitates his punishing any person who violates his righteous character. Remember last week I said that everyone should understand that you agreed to a covenant agreement. It is not just special to you alone. Your words and your actions hold weight for everyone around you. Your family has to ride with who they came in the game with. Hmm? Yeah, no, but, but you, you, anyway, you disagree. Well, we're going to get to that. We're we going to get to that point. Some of them yeah. Like, uh, no 
<laughs> somebody said, I'm going to go. I, I think somebody called me. <laughs> We, 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 yeah, we got, we got it right here. Numbers 26, 10, and 11, right? And the earth opens his mouth and swallowed them up together, together with Kor. When that company died, when the fire devoured 250 men. Now, devoured here, right, means to consume, as in to eat, to destroy completely, conceived of as consuming, right? And they became a warning. But the sons of Kor did not die. Anybody wants to answer why? <laughs> Don't even try it. All right. Remember, oh, I'm oh, sorry. Who, who, who? Okay. Not all of them was bad. Some of them seen what was happening, and they, uh, you know, because my family do not do this, I don't have to do this. I know the, you know, if I understand the word and I know that they, I shouldn't be doing it, then that's what I'm going to go on. I'm not going to follow them. And that's what some of the Quran, Quran, uh, Quran family did. Nice. It sounds like I don't know what he's talking about, but I think we need to go over here. Are y'all with me? No, I'm not with you. You know what? I think I left my ZZs in the tent. Let me go grab them ZZs real quick. <laughs> Now understand, remember, these were men of good reputation that had become manipulated and have caused division and separation. Remember? These are the ones that died along with, with the other three men. Because they allowed themselves to be manipulated. There was actually some people that said, no, 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 I don't, I, don't, I don't think this is right. Yeah. This warning came during the time of Bell. Uh, pure. You remember that story, right? So we're a little bit further down the timeline, but which goes to show you how much of a warning and sign the event core really was. Yet the people still didn't act right. You know we have to our way. That's not the Hebrew way. Is that the Hebrew way? See me tell me they still doing this today? Uh, yeah, yeah. Warning is that age 5251 is, is nace, right? It's a flag or a standard or an ensign. It's, it's not something different, but, but the sense of a message informing a danger, all right? And then you have 5264, it's a soft. It's, it's a prime route to glean from afar, i.e. to be conspicuous, which is standing out so as to be clearly visible. All right, so you should have no chance but to see and hear what's being said to you. Now, just like we've been talking, see, if these things go in one ear after the other, then whose fault is that? All right, they ain't what they thought. Like we already said, they probably thought that this really was coming from the Father. But then again, what standard were they holding that to? Wasn't the Father's standard, was it? The only time that really happens is when uh, you trust the individual. Oh. They, you feel like they have, they never lied to me before. Oh. They've always been good to me. When I ask for bread, they give me bread. You know, mm -hmm. when I need something, they always help me out. So why would they lie about this? Mm -hmm. You know, so you, when you have a whole person in high regard and then they say something wrong, you really don't, it doesn't resonate with you unless you really have a, say, hey, wait a minute, didn't your most high say this? You know, if your mind don't go there initially, then you're like, no. So it's like I said before, you trust on people who shouldn't be talking, and the ones that should be talking are the ones you brush to the side. Right. All right. Go ahead, Maurice, show you. you I, I think that Cora, I think uh, with Cora it, uh, and the, the others who got swallowed up, it is something we see today, and it's a gang mentality. Like you're just gonna ride with this individual, ride or die, despite what Yahuwah, what Yahuwah says or what his word says or what you know to be true, you're gonna go ahead and um, uh, dismiss that in order to be down with that individual. And I see that a lot um, in the world today and in the walk. You see people who are just down with the individuals they're with in spite of the Torah. And 
you know, you see it acted out in real life. Um, well, like I, I said, some of the lines have been blurred, you know, with the trends and the fads that go on today. Everybody wants to be a part of something, but what's getting missed is the actual truth in the wall. So it's, 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 it's the young people. It's the young people. Huh? I'm a young people. Huh? Young and, young and rural. Not a minor. I think it's also pride. You know, pride always goes before the fall. Um, I think it, you know, it, it, this this also could be the case, um, I believe, also that happened with Cora and, and the, the men that followed him. Because he was of such um, statue, per se. Um, he did, he just basically led them astray instead of them um, depending on their own discernment, they just followed in line with him. And uh, I think Cole was, you know, he was a very prideful man. It, well, it led to his destruction and, and many others. I yield. Pride is a delicate thing because it was the Pharaoh's pride that got him messed up, that the father brought out, right? When it comes to these 250 individuals, you got to understand, I think it's the second or third lesson I said, Cora appealed to people who thought and acted just like him. That's where they got tripped up at. So they already weren't going to do any research. They already weren't going to listen to leadership because that was already in them. That's why I'm trying to tell you that they weren't as innocent as you might want to think in the beginning of the story. There's a reason why it was 250 of them. But more of them, I don't like me saying purge the camp, but Huh? Who we got? Yo, Shadao. Yeah, you're you're very right. They were very stubborn and stiff necked. Yeah. Mm hmm Oh yeah. All right. Second Peter two and six. If by turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, he condemned them to extinction, making them an example. This was the Greek fifty two sixty two hippo igma. I you ain't gotta say it meaning an example, model, or pattern of what is going to happen to the unrighteous. So with all of this, I'll get to you in a, in a second more though. With, with all of this, there were already so many signs that they had before they got to this point. They didn't have to wait until this part became for it to be an example made. And that's what we're trying to get to you today. You got to understand this is some of the things you need to do the opposite of. So you're not made an example of when it comes to your time. He said you're supposed to endure to the end, right? I don't know when your end is. So you should be practicing this stuff now. Because if you have the expectation that you're going to make it a judgment before you die, hey, look, I can't help you there, buddy. Okay, I can't help you. Go ahead, Moray. I just wanted to ask, Moray, um, could it be possible that um, that 250 people was um, core of family? I mean, since it was such a specific number? No, no, no. There is, remember, it was, it was specific tribes of people that did this. Right? Yes, you had, you had the Levites, you had the Benjamites, and who else was it? You, are you thinking this specifically his family? You, are you asking me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was just saying, you know, since it was such a, a specific number of 250, you know, and I, I know Cora was a heavy influencer. I was just saying maybe a, a portion of that, large portion of that could have been family members, you know, or, you know, I, that's, I was just asking the question. When you're saying family members, because <clears throat> what we're, we're looking at is, uh, you see that his sons were not affected, and then you later on you see their 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 nashim or their women or their wives were not affected. So that's why I was saying that when he made it specifically, they were talking about specific men, but outside of meaning that the men and their goods and their house, let's say their tents, but as far as the women and the sons, they were not affected because later on you're reading, I think it's in Devarim, mm -hmm. where the 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 nashim or the wives were like, you know, we want to ask for inheritance their because yep. their their ish is gone. So I would mm -hmm. say it had to been the men. Wow, thanks a lot. I appreciate that. He said anytime. Any other questions? 
All right. First Corinthians 10 and 6. Now, these things took place as examples for us that we might not desire evil as they did. Okay. All right. So this was a warning against idolatry, which we all know still exists today. Right. It seems to be a drug for some people. I don't know who. All right. But some people would rather idolize someone else or even themselves instead of depending on the Father. And I'm not talking outside the truth either. Yeah. In matters of self-discipline, you need humility, as everybody's been saying today, a love for the Father, and selfless service that defeats self-indulgence, which is to think that you can do it all by yourself. Your ancestors thought the same way, right? They thought they needed, as a matter of fact, they thought they needed a king instead of the Father himself. You remember that? Give us somebody to rule over us. For some of us in today's world, we're the king. It's still the same result. We act as though we don't need the father. Yet we call him every chance we get. All right? Same story, different chapter. That's the main time everybody call him when you get in trouble. Remember I said you're supposed to be calling on the father in good times and in bad, right? I said you can't pick and choose when you want to you wanna honor him. Huh? Oh. It's you no matter if you if you if you're down or you're up, you're supposed to you're supposed to thank him. What does it mean to be a witness? We almost out of here. Can I get one? Can, well, not one more, can I get one? Uh who's that? Not a mana. A witness is someone a witness is proof of an action or word that was said in front of another person. All right, anyone else? Yeah, <laughs> that old, thank you. Uh, yes, a person that, that sees something, they, they witness it, they see it with their eyes. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, a witness talking about a person could be a person who has some direct knowledge of something. Mm. Uh, a witness is just a testimony. It's just a testimony? A test okay. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. You gonna you gonna say it with a little in at the Yeah. Yeah, said that Yeah, it's a sworn testimony though. Under oath, right? Oh. It's it's a, you put your hand up. Okay. More that would. Or say a witness is a confirmer. Hmm, it could be. And got Henshaw. Could it be evidence? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just. Can it be that. evidence? Can it? Can you, are you saying the evidence is a witness? Correct. Yeah. A, a witness can bring evidence. Okay. That's evidence. Uh, it's a person who has seen or given first hand evidence of something or an event. Uh, it is a person who sees an event, typically a crime or an accident taking place. They have proof. All right, go ahead, Yosef. Yeah, I would say a witness is somebody who can confirm uh, something that has been seen or said. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, in the back. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm going to look up. That's okay. Yeah. A witness can be someone who can be credible mm -hmm. or they can kind of be. Must, say that. Yeah. They, they're not all credible now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be a false witness. Go ahead, Emmett. Someone that can confirm the evidence. Okay. Y'all love evidence. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all love showing some evidence, boys. <laughs> What's I going to do at the <laughs> at judgment? Hold on, Father. Wait now. I know I got some evidence. I got. 
I don't do it, Father. Oh, no. I got a whole bookshelf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for making jokes at y'all expense. I'm sorry. As a verb, all right, you should remember what a verb transitive is. All right, something has to happen in order for someone or something to be a witness to or against. All right, so it means to testify. All right, to attest to, to have personal or direct cognizance of, all right, see for oneself, right? You can be a witness to a historic event, which Corey made itself part of, right? To bear witness against or for, right, to testify, to bear witness to one's religious convictions. There's an opportunity to witness the good news to someone. That, that's Mishael right there, boy. He, he'll take that, boy. Yeah. Your actions will witness against you. What you mean, how dare they? Uh, you're feeling guilty already. I ain't go to the verse yet. Yeah. Yahshua 24, 22 to 27. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua said to all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness against us, for it has heard all the words of Yahuwah that he spoke to us. Therefore, it shall be a witness against you, lest you deal falsely with Yahweh. Anybody know that word is? Oh. Wow. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. H5707. You, get a, you would say aid? Or eid? Yeah, we say aid. It's a witness. With a sense of a witness, all right? In a legal sense. A person who testifies in a legal setting. Sometimes extended to refer to inanimate objects serving as witnesses. Okay? Uh oh. Couldn't the stones that they wrote yes. the uh, that um, Moshe wrote on uh, the commandments on that was a witness? Yeah, yeah. The first set and the second set. Yes. <laughs> well, it was it was two sets, wasn't it? Yes. Uh oh, I'm. <laughs> I was, I was, it, was, it was a joke. I was, it, it was two sets. They was oh, they go that witness. It was evidence. Fifty-seven and twelve in my. Is, oh, could you give the common folk a chance to say it? Oh, Ada. <laughs> now, this is one with the sense of a memorial type witness, right? A structure or object erected or inscribed to give witness to past events on the analogy of how people are witness that give testimony, right? Numbers 27 and 3. Our father died in the wilderness. He was not among the company of those who gathered themselves together against Yahuwah in the company of Korah, but died his own sin, and he had no sons. Again, that already happened, and they still talking about it. <laughs> do, you, do you understand this, this? He made himself a witness, right, that can be used to help deter. This is one of those words that we were talking about. Against doing something you ain't got no business doing. Oh man, you talking about core again, huh? <sighs> this was a witness. You go, you gonna have people get them excuses too. Well, that was so long ago. They gone, right? I mean, ain't nobody sons, right? Don't they sing or something? They, they make songs, don't they? This was a witness against Cora and the company of men with him. Remember, something has to happen. Just read it in order for someone or something to be a witness to or against, right? Number 16, 36, 37. Then Yahuwah spoke to Moses saying, tell Eleazar, the sons of Aharon, the priest, to take up the censers out of the blaze, then scatter the fire far and wide, for they have become set apart. Now, divinely ordained instruction is given to the priestly leadership through the prophetic servant Moses, who position and whose position and authority has been just been vindicated, right? So all that had to happen just for the you to say, you know, Moses was right, right? I believe in that. Right. <laughs> the Father has set things in place not to cause strife, but to bring order according to his word. Being rebellious is a battle you won't win. It's like taking the defensive stance against a police officer, you know, it won't end well. And, it won't, it won't end well. I know my rights. But you're, right. You have to shoot me. You can, be for, you, can, you can be forever reminded of the past in the hopes that you change 
for your future. That's what this blueprint is all about. All right. Kanisha. Why you say it like that, Moray? Right? Come on. Okay, so would this be so Cora and um, these would be who um, show uh, wrote about when he talked about when the Messiah, um, when he rose from the dead, these are the dead that he would have gone to minister uh, to? Hold on, I need to, I need to, you, you, you sound like you was mumbling. I couldn't hear. No, I hate my earbuds. Okay, I'm grateful for him, but I hate him. Hold on, let me disconnect. Ah. Huh. Is that better? Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so um, the people that, the, the um, generation of Korah that the ground opened and received them when Shaul's writing where he talks about the ground um, I'm sorry when Messiah uh, rose and he went and ministered to the dead these would have been who they were referring to or am I mistaken or do you not know what I'm talking about altogether Jesus. <laughs> Uh, but he went in, it, it's when the, the Mashiach rose <laughs> yeah but it's not just him it, it was a lot of people you know so in other words it was not catered to just him alone or his family alone it was throughout the Tanakh you see a lot of stuff that took place not just in the Torah for example there's a whole generation that died <laughs> you know mm -hmm. in the wilderness and then you got some others uh, uh, that things that took place yeah true Adam same thing. So there, there are some other people that he went to. That's a part of that, not just uh, Korach's Mishpacha. Wow, Adam. Okay, Toda. <laughs> are you among the wicked? Yeah. Yeah. Every time you go to Walmart. Every time you go to Walmart. Wow. We ain't getting no sponsorship from them. <laughs> Psalms 26, 8 and 12. Oh, you who love the habitation of your house and the place where you esteem dwells. Do not sweep my soul away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hands are evil devices and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I shall walk in integrity, right? This is uh, Hebrew 85, 37. Yeah, Somebody, please say something. Besides him. Oh. Yeah, they might know what. <laughs> tone. For those online who can't hear him, it's tone. Perfection, purity, and innocence. All right. I shall walk in my integrity. Redeem me and show me mercy and show mercy up unto me. My foot stands on level ground. In the great assembly, I will bless. Yahuwah. Did everybody do that? Yeah. Uh huh. Sure. <laughs> 21. So for the people online, we have the H2161 is Zaman, right? It's a prime root. The plan usually in a bad sense. This is the evil devices word that I'm describing here. All right? So, vice means to imagine the plot, the purpose, to think evil. Who thinks evil? Who just wakes up and thinks evil? Right? Do you have the 2154? Yeah. What would you say? Zimah. Zimah, yes. It's the plan, infamy, the state of being well known for some bad quality or deed. This keeps getting worse for court, don't it? As well as an evil or wicked act, shameful behavior with the sense of depravity, right? It's a corrupt, depraved, or degenerate act or practice, okay? The noun device comes from the old French word devious, which means division and separation. There you have it, okay? So as we can see, what Corey and his company ultimately found out was that they were setting the evil devices against Moses and Aharon. They didn't understand that it doesn't necessarily have to be other people that you claim are to blame for your problems. You say that, they're, that they open their mouths to cause division or separation, when in fact it can be you that causes all the trouble that you seem to be experiencing. You? No, not you individually, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It was for dramatic effect and you just happened to be in a line of sight. <laughs> you said, me? I didn't cause no division. I wasn't saying you. 
goodness. Any questions or comments? We got one more week. We're going to close this thing up. We're going to talk about the other 70 plus people that were doing something they had in business doing. Oh, yeah. 70 plus people. Who did that? Travis. Um, I had a question about earlier. It was said that, and I, I might just need to go watch the previous lesson over again because uh -huh. um, I might have missed it. But earlier it was said, it was asked, how do you, how do you know the difference between Oh yeah, that's your, lesson two. What what <laughs> what that's happened? Two. I'm sorry. No, that's lesson two. That's actually, I think I. Well, I know he's okay. So I'm sorry. Finish the question. <laughs> How do you know the difference between your understanding, or if it's the understanding that Yahuwah gives to you, and also to expound on that? How do you know the difference between Yahuwah talking to you? Or you just being in your own mind, I guess. And I yield. Ooh, that's it. That's why you still in the lesson two? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that wasn't in the lesson two. <laughs> that, that wasn't in the lesson two. That last part definitely wasn't in the lesson two. So, so that's what I said. Sometimes when we when we um, we want to do what is right. So when when for those that are trying to figure out if it's Yah or if it's themselves. There are, there's a couple litmus tests that you can do. One is the person would need to pray about what they heard, right? Instead of, in other words, this person is probably genuine believing that what Yah gave them is true, but then sometimes when you add your commentary to it, that becomes you. You're, you're trying to highlight what Yah has shared with you. And the only thing Yah wants you to do is just share what I told you. I don't want you to add to it. I don't want you to take away from it. This is what Yah told me to give to you. That person then prays about it, meditates or fast on that, and then can bear witness of what the message is. Maybe you need? Understand? Um, yes, yes, yes. I mean, but if, like, if I have a thought and I feel like it's Yah answering a question that I had or Yah telling me to do something. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean on how do I discern whether that thought just came from me randomly or whether this was from Yah? Like Okay, so you got two part questions. So the so the first one the, so the first answer is for your latter question. Your firm your, your first question here is you're gonna walk it out and see. You're gonna ask Yah, is this me or is this you? And then you're gonna walk it out, just like you know the story when he kept going there, Shemuel, and you you have to walk it out to see if it's you or if it's of Yah. Okay. Because, of course, you know Yah means you well, means you good, or won't give you these since we're we're in the subject of warning, you know, warning and things like that. But the only way that you really would know is when you apply the verb or the action to whatever he's telling you to do. Okay. Okay. And then he'll show up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that. That was in lesson two. No, it wasn't. Go ahead. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Huh? You can turn on the mic, though. Um, well, I was gonna say, could I add to like basically what he said too? Like, um, sure. Just my own example, like my own testimony. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, me personally, my name is Aliyahu Travis. Um, but me personally, like, I had similar situations where. You know, I feel like I hear from the Father, Yahuwah, and um, you know, like, well, how do I know this is actually from him? And I feel like the biggest thing is, is like, he does send confirmation as you're doing what he says. Like, you have that in the forefront, like, okay, I heard from Yahuwah. And then you keep that in your mind, but you're also still doing your day to day. And then he just gonna, he wants you to do it, obviously, because he told you. So he's gonna bring that to you. You're gonna see signs. You're gonna see maybe someone you talk to. It's gonna be a very meaningful interaction. Um, just things like that because like he told me to come to Virginia and like me being out here for a month I met the people from Yahuwah, Pathway to Yahuwah and that was like that was a big um, that was a big um, I guess sign or confirmation that I was supposed to be out here because I was like I was seeking fellowship to you know other people that believe in Yahuwah so you know that's mine. Thank you. I appreciate that. Amen. 
Any other questions or comments pertaining to the lesson? All right. Oh, our hearts and minds are clear. We can stand and close. Father, we thank you for the word that was given today. We ask, Father, that you bless us and help us to keep that word in our hearts, minds, and beings, that we may be doers of that word. We ask, Father, that you give us memory and recall of the word. We ask, Father, in the name of Yahushua Mashiach, that you continue to bless us with your presence. Continue to lift us up, that we may lift you up as we are. Uh, continue to fellowship we ask that you uh bless the meal we are about to receive and bless the funds of god and, and bless everyone who cooked and we just give you all esteem honor and praise for your loving commitment towards us we also ask that you bless each one of us as we depart from this place and that we all will get home safely and find our homes like it was when we left and we give you all the esteem, honor, and praise in the name of Yahushua Mashiach. Amen. All right. Um, someone, can, can you hear me? All right. So we, we're we're at the six o'clock mark. So we'll have to pick up.